Hi, I'm Neil Barker and welcome to my stripped down guide of the iPod Touch 2nd and 3rd gen, or 3rd gen, they're both the same essentially uh, in the methods we're going to use, there's some parts that are different. Um, so this is basically, we're going to strip it down, there's nothing wrong with it, you can, as you can see it powers up, swipes okay, but obviously if you've got things like smash screen like this piece here, um, you know the digitizer or anything like that then this is how we'll do it. Now we'll start off by using a superbly magic tool called the iSesimo that we stock on uh, AppleiPodParts.com. You can find all the spare parts, tools, everything you need, info, guides, etc. Uh, AppleiPodParts.com. And um, yeah, so here we go. So the iSesimo is perfect for these. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. Now the method I use to uh, to enter into the top uh, on, on previous videos I've done this using sort of razor scrapers and all sorts of things like that. But this is just absolutely superb. We're going to go in at the top. Um, and what you want to do, you want to aim to go in between the rubber and the the metal casing and not the glass and the rubber and uh, just kind of releasing those clips at the top. Now they'll come a little way but they won't look like they will come too far but uh, but they do, there's kind of a clip, couple of clips so you're just going to kind of edge that away, not too much so that it, it starts flexing the glass but it's a little bit. If you don't get any joy there, we're going to start at this top, this top left corner and I know that there's a, there's a little clip in there. Again, we're always going in for in between the, uh, if you can see in there, we're always going to go in between the rubber and the metal casing. Um, and there's clips strategically placed down either side. Um, down here, as you can see, on the side of the glass, you've got one, two, three, four clips on there. And there, there's a clip there, clip there, clip there, clip there. So you are almost, you're going in, uh, you're going in just in there. So you're going in between the, uh, the, f the actual casing itself and the rubber frame and you just pop in the clips as you go. Um, but we start at the top, and you can see those two little clips there. We're going to the top and we kind of release those. So right back to the iPod Touch. Um, so we know I just pop that top clip, and you can just feel the metal clip. They, they, you know, I make it look easy, because I've done hundreds and hundreds of these, but um, you've got to be, you've got to persevere, be careful, and, uh, and just watch what you're doing. Then we can go for that top clip again, give it a little bit more, more of a ply. You can see it's starting to come up there. Um, obviously as we pop that it's giving it a little bit more so we're going to follow it down this side um, not too as we run this down it's nice to a great tool to use this really good um, we're going to run down the side here and find the next clip now we're not going to go too deeply because what you can do is you can sever the cable for the volume buttons we're just going to run it down the rubber and just use the touch to, to kind of feel for the next clip well, I found that clip and you're always just trying to just lightly coax it down as you go and then you can hear the clips pinging and obviously you can see one, two, three, four clips down there and there we go, so you've got two clips on the bottom either side of the dot connector here um, and it's just a case of going in again between the rubber and metal casing in there, pop it, I can't I can't hold this tool in any higher regard the iSesimo is awesome, you can find it on the accessories uh, sorry, on the tool section of uh, appleipodparts.com it's absolutely fantastic it's, you know, it's, it's a few quid but um, it, it's, you, it's so versatile and it doesn't break um, I've never broken one yet and we've used them again and again and again and they're brilliant for everything uh, right so we've released the top all the way down the left hand side and then the bottom but you you won't lift that corner because at the moment it's kind of stuck around the headphone jack uh, it kind of loops around there so we're going to go around for the, the, the right hand side now obviously what gets difficult here is that with the, with the screen up at an angle it's going to force even harder into this edge here Sorry, this edge here. Um, so what I tend to do is get my thumb on there and I'm kind of pulling it that way, pulling it towards the other side. It gives you just a little bit more into there so you can see where the rubber is. And again, you're going in between the rubber and the metal casing and you're just going to pry it. Now, this, this iPod hasn't been in a part, I think it's probably once or twice. It's not weak, but I am look, I do, I do make it look easy. Um, but it's just patience, perseverance, and knowing where the clips are. If you watch this video, you have a look at where I pointed you out on the other one. In fact, I'll do it again, just in case. So there's there's the screen you're looking at, and there's the clip. So if you imagine, on the right-hand side, or we'll start the way we're gonna go, you pop the top clips, and then on the left-hand side, you've got a clip right in the corner, and then there's a big gap where the volume buttons are, and there's a clip, 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 all within an inch of each other. And then there's these two bottom clips there and there and then as you go into the right hand side you know that there's not one not right in the corner but just just down from the corner there and then they're more evenly spread all the way down down that side because there's obviously no cables 
Um, so obviously what I was saying is it's just patience, perseverance and using the right tools really is. This ISSMO is brilliant. Um, right, so we're going to go in between there and it's a case of running it down and again using that gentle rocking motion um, there as we go down, all the way down. And as you get, sometimes it sticks a little bit around the headphone jack. Um, it's just a case of just kind of flopping it up and the screen and just be careful when you do this you're going to open the screen like a book like so um, and obviously what you've got to watch for is that's the cable for so what you don't want to do is open it the other way around um, so there we go so what we're going to do we get a little non-marking tool so it's, it's intuitive and we're just going to pop that connector this is a third gen but the second gen is essentially exactly the same um, the cable configuration is a little bit different on these um, and the LCD screens now that's the third gen screen. You can see if you sit the cable down on the third gen screen, it's got that little dog leg effect. So when you lay it flat, the connector stays in the middle. The connection's there. On a second gen screen, you've got when you lay the cable flat, it pokes out to the side. Now essentially the connector is in roughly the same area. The second gen, that connector is up here at the top. The third gen is at the bottom. So imagine when you're going to put a second gen in there, the cable the cable sits there. Uh, here, there's the plug. And obviously the the third gen it sits here. Now, interesting thing, second, third gen, uh, and this is one to note for when you're ordering the parts, is the second generation, obviously it comes in, I think it was 8 gig, 16 gig, 32 gig, um, all second gen. Now when they switch to the third gen, um, they look identical from the outside, they really do. Um, there's only a couple of ways of really telling. The boards are different, but if you've got an 8 gigabyte third gen, it's exactly the same hardware as a second gen so you've got to remember, 8 gig third gen, you need the second gen screen, you need the second gen LCD, and the batteries are, are sort of they, the batteries are the same for all of them. If you've got a, a I think it's a 32 and 64 gig third gen, so anything other than an 8 gig third gen, then that's when you start needing the third gen digitizer and the third gen LCD. So that's one to remember. A bit of a, but it's on our site. It's explained on AppleIpodParts.com. If you go to the digitizer assemblies, it should all be explained. So enough of me jibber jabbering. That's the third gen digitizer out of the way. So if that's the what you need to replace, you plug it back in, and we'll show you the in the reverse in a minute. So we've removed the digitizer assembly from the the touch third gen, and we're going to go for the LCD screen. Obviously, it still powers up, still works like that. Um, and what you find on the LCD screen is held down by a couple of very tiny bits of um, bits of adhesive down each side. The best way to access these is uh, is at the bottom. But you've got to be really careful. The ISSMO is great for it. And what you've got is you've got the metal frame that it sits in and the white plastic bit of the, of the LCD. And we're looking to go in there and just gently lift the LCD screen up. Now it gets a bit ugly. Um, sometimes you might, but all you're looking to do is just gently ease it up. What you don't want to do is get in there, lift it up, and you'll fracture the LCD screen and it'll be useless. Um, so I'm doing it bit by bit that side and then as you go a um, little bit bit by bit and what we've got here is you'll find there's a silver back in that kind of that the LCD screen goes should go with the screen sometimes it sticks to the base plate so we're looking to go between in there we're looking to go between the clear sorry not the clear the, the silver bit and the LCD and you can run this tool down either side now I think because this has been a part, it's got slightly heavier than normal adhesive on. Um, it's just the sticky tape that they use all the way. So it's just because we're running the the, the RSSMO all the way down the screen, all the way down there, a little bit by bit, either side until the screen. All it does, the screen folds up, and you can see the little the adhesive there. Right there we go. So they have the iPod Touch, the LCD screen. Now that's the adhesive strips that run either side, and um, in here, if I can peel it back, it doesn't matter too much about this one. As you can see that the reflective film that we want to kind of lay flat on the back of the LCD. You don't want too many fingerprints on it or anything. It'll go horrible. So, right, next thing we need to do, and this is how you access the uh, the battery and, and the LCD screens. We're going to pop the screws off. Now, we're going to use these little tool trays that we use on all the videos. They're fantastic. Um, we're now selling these on the site. So you can find those in the tools and accessories section um, of AppleIpodParts.com. And they're great. Uh, you can also see we've got a bit of a layout of an iPhone 4 there. We're developing sort of different layouts to tell you where the screws go. Um, so, yep, you can find that on our site. So we're going to lay the iPod in there. And uh, we've got some screws to take out. So this plate here, uh, the screen cable runs around the back of it all the way down to that connector. So that's the LCD. You've also got the battery terminals there. 
and the battery is attached to the back of this plate just by glue. So we're going to release these screws. So there's one, two, three, and a fourth one up here before you remove the screen. So we can do that now, can't we? So we'll take that screw out first, put it in the relevant pot because they're sort. Of, I think they're the same size screws, but the two at the bottom is sort of slightly, uh, slightly different. So we want to keep those. And we're just going to run down either side. We can we can leave the screen over there. It's not not going to do too much damage or any at all. And we're going to run down either side of here. And take the screws out. Right, okay, and as I was saying, uh, the best way to get into these is the ISSMO tool. Um, you can find it on our site, and it's absolutely fantastic. And this screw down the bottom here. Don't forget, you can find us on Facebook. We um, we all drop under the one group, all the parts and repairs under Apple Spark. So if you go to Facebook forward slash uh, dot com so it's forward slash Apple Sparks UK, so it's facebook.com forward slash apple sparks uk you like us we've got plenty of you can meet the team on there pictures of the guys um and we've also got some before and after shots of ipads iphones ipods smashed for you know a versus looking like new at the end of it all sorts of different photos that's like quite interesting now at this stage when you've got the lcd up if you um the common fault with these is the headphone jacks if you get up to the point where you need the headphone jack replacing um it's those one two three four solder pads and a fifth one there and those two screws there and it lifts it out now you can do it without taking the plate out with loads of practice but i'd suggest you go as far as taking the plate out it's a lot easier so I've got all those screws out we're going to use the isesimo again fantastic tool and we need to lift this plate up the best way of doing it is getting on the inside of there and just literally lifting that out um because what happens is if you're trying to shuffle the plate they, those little those little clips can often get stuck like that in these side rails so you can't get it out so it's a case of Get that bit of that, that glue, lifting that out. The plate comes up. There's the battery attached to the back of it. It's adhesive, bit of a hair dryer on that plate there. We'll warm up the adhesive and that battery will just come off nicely. Um, and if you want to replace it, you lift that bit of insulation tape. Those three solder terminals, off it comes. Don't forget to replace the, the sort of the insulation on there. Um, and there you go. What you can do is you can lay the battery flat in there and then assemble with it not stuck to the plate. And the plate will kind of just find its own way in and the battery will just eventually sit to it. So that's the battery. Um, obviously we're replacing the LCD screen, well we're not today, but if you wanted to, then it's just a case of that connection there. You get underneath it, and it, it flicks off like so, and then the cable lifts off like that. There you go, there's the LCD screen, all disconnected. So you've got the battery there, headphone jacks accessible, anything else you want to replace. Um, you've got that logic board cable on there, you've got the button set here, that goes into that connector. You've got the volume buttons, the power buttons, they're just little screws in there. So if we're going to replace the LCD screen, it's just a case of coming in, plugging it in, like so. Again, always be wary of what generation you've got before you order the, order the bits. Um, you can always call us up if you're unsure, or you can put the serial number into Apple and they should tell you if it's the second or third. Right, so the screen connector goes in like that battery comes in over and the screen is obviously it's going to come in here now one thing you might be able to see is on the screen itself if I try and bring it in you've got a little plastic circle there and a plastic circle there they locate there and there when it all goes back together so you're going to lift the screen over just tuck it in there roughly where it sits and you go right okay paranoia check on that connector that's in place and we're just going to drop the drop the plate down Tuck, tuck these little clips into underneath that bezel. And what we can do is we can lift the screen and just try and position the plate under there. That's that, that's that silver membrane that we don't really want to lose off of there. Right, so there you go, that sits in there. And we can replace the screws one by one. What I tend to do is put put them in loosely because the, the plate has a little bit of a scope to move around and then I go back and tie, tighten them all up as we go once they're all in place these two bottom screws tend uh, are slightly different I'm not sure if they're different thread or they're just they're certainly discoloured different colour but um, so put those in and then you put these in up the side 
remember appleipodparts.com you get all the all the parts all the tools all the know-how all the help we've obviously you can ring us up ask us questions and we'll help as much as we can we don't need that we can't put that one in just yet and again like I said ISESMO tool is absolutely brilliant for doing the job right so they're all in bar one until the screen's down we can't put the last one in so we're just going to nip all of those up there we go right we're going to lay that down back fitting around the screen Ideally, that wouldn't come off, um, but there we go. And now, what you're going to looking to do is, you can refresh that little bit strips of adhesive. We do the adhesive, um, you know, pre-cut adhesive sets, or in fact, we do the the sheets as well. You can cut your own two tiny little strips down either side. That's all that's needed. And then, what you're looking to do is just literally thumb your screen into place, and, and it will find those little locating lugs. Um, you've got to make sure the screen sits inside that silver notch there, and you and you look to see if it's in line both down both sides and it won't move side to side if it's in those lugs so that's it that also has a copper cable that you can copper cable copper bit of tape over here that you can kind of sit on that push down quick test using the power button that works okay screens held down so we're quite happy we can put the last screw in um, back in the early days this is one that I always used to forget luckily it's not critical but uh, there we go I don't forget anymore so rest assured there we go that screws in there. We're just going to give the screen a bit of a wipe down, get all the fingerprints off. One thing is, if you're wiping it, we use a lint-free cloth because there's nothing worse than getting dust under your screen or fingerprints or anything like that. Um, so we'll give it a bit of a wipe down. Be careful of that little gold contact there, the home button contact. You can quite easily rub, ping it, and it and it twings and it pings off, um, which is not great because it means your home button won't work. So. Was we're happy that that's grease free, dust free, dirt free, you name it. We can go back with the digitizer and obviously we do the same to the inside of that. I know I haven't got my fingers on it. Um, come over that cable and it's a very tricky thing. You probably can't see it there, but I'm looking to uh, get the get the connector roughly in place. Now, this is the most. This is apart from taking it apart. This is the most critical bit because you don't want to tear the cable by accidentally taking it beyond its limit. So what I've done there. Uh, the second gens are a lot easier because they stick out the side. You can put that in with that in place, but with this, you've almost got to kind of lift it up. And again, it's a patient thing. If you're getting a bit hot under the colour, get a bit annoyed with it, walk away, have a cup of tea, come back. Right. So that little little paranoia check there. Push that connector down. Hold the screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to power it up. I'm going to check the screen. You don't want to clip it in for to realise that it's still not working. So there we go. Quick swipe. Great. It's all working fine. Once you're happy that it's dust free, the connection's in, we'll, one quick paranoia check there. We're going to go in, and we're going to go in top first. We're going to go in that way. So there's top clips going first, and then down the sides, and then at the bottom. So start off by, by helping it out, by lifting up a, a bit like that. that. That drops in straight away. Then as you push down, we're going to go clip, 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 all the way down with your thumbs, down the, side, down the sides, and then in at the bottom and then you're going to give it another firm push all the way down to make sure that it is all flush there we go and get a bit of a bit of a wipe get the fingerprints off knock the camera and um, there we go turn it on swipe it's all good so there we go don't, don't forget the ISS mode is absolutely fantastic tool that's uh, appleipodparts.com on the tool section um, so as are the little tool trays which are fantastic uh, that we're developing and the rest of the screwdrivers, plastic tools and of course all of the parts. Um, so I'm Neil Barker, that's my iPod Touch second, third gen disassembly, um, pretty much as far as you need to go, anything further then you know, you've, you've got big problems and um, there you go, thanks for watching.